Look, you guys, it's a hot dog. It's funny. That's not really a dad joke, so what is that? Um, a faux pas. That's what they say. I was sitting on the front porch with Bear and he just was, it was too much for him. It is very warm outside. This right here is officially the season we're in where there are canning jars on the counter from now until, I don't know, November. Right, hot dog? Admittedly, sometimes I do leave them on the counter longer than is strictly necessary. You could put them up the next day, I mean, like once they're cool, but sometimes I leave them there until I do the next batch and move them out just because makes me feel proud to see them. <laughs> I have the hardest time wanting to use my canned stuff, you know, once it's time to start doing that because I love when the shelf is all full of it. I mean, I do use it. I get over that feeling, but I just like seeing them all. I like seeing them on the counter. So I just got back today, um, this afternoon. I drove to Arkansas and back this weekend. A lot of driving. It was a lot of driving. I went to get Jackson and Asher. They're home, and it was a nice visit. I, it was it was good. Uh, very brief, but it was nice. Took a walk around the neighborhood I grew up in, spent the night at my dad's house, and turned around and came back home, which was very tiring. I actually split it up because after as much traveling as I've done this last month and a half, I was not in the mental place to like drive a lot. So Jackson and Asher, uh, and I stayed in Birmingham and then came the rest of the way home today. And normally, when I get home on a trip like this, I would not turn my camera on because I would want to... <laughs> no, that's not completely true. A lot of times you get home from a trip like this, you do have to turn your camera on because of exactly what's happened this time. <laughs> this morning I'm driving back. We just left Birmingham. Um, actually had stopped, just had stopped at the, the Bucky's and... Uh, <laughs> Jeremiah FaceTimes me and as soon as he did I knew exactly why because there's been this ongoing theme and I mean I know I've traveled a lot this last month and a half I don't travel that much it's actually like I'm I'm mostly home right <laughs> but <laughs> for years I think I have missed 95% of the births on our farm this is accurate. This is accurate. I'm talking I would have a goat that would look like she was about to give birth for days. I would have a flight that was leaving. Jeremiah would call me. I'm on the runway. I haven't even gotten I haven't even gotten out of the state. And he's sending me pictures of baby goats. Like I mean stuff like that. And no exception. I was four hours and thirty minutes away from our house today when I got the FaceTime. That Miss Helen has brought a new little baby in the world. Oh, I saw a trick and we need to go grab some out of the pantry. You can rub cows down with coconut oil and it soaks in and it works for flies. And it's supposed to work really well. Could you please not do that, ma'am? I'm not about that. Oh, she keeps blocking me. Are we gonna put her on the stand? Mm -hmm. I need to get some of that out. Oh, look at him. Which honestly, he's done a pretty good job on this side. The other yeah. side looks a little tight. Hey, little mm. cutie. Mm. I know. Hey, mama. Mm. Mm. So, okay, yeah. Helen, mm. this is her second birth on our farm. Um, third birth overall. Third overall, yeah. It's wild to me how much different she is on the second one. Like her udder is bigger, her teats are different. I'm saying, it gives me hope for them because he was more like them last time. Yeah. But Hope was more like this. And this was that was Hope's third calving the last time that Hope. Yeah. So I'm hoping that like she'll progress these two will progress to this. Yeah. He is a cutie. He's pretty big. He's hey mom. White spot on top. This calf is the first calf um, from crossing our red Devon bull over our jerseys. It is a bull calf. Eventually when we get a heifer from one of these, we will keep it and raise it up to see how it does for potentially being a family dairy cow. Um, the hope with crossing the jerseys to something like the Devon is to get a little more um, sustainability regarding their need for 
supplementation yeah. for their feed. I do want to point out too, um, she looks real hollow right now. You pretty much kind of have to say this if you're making content with jerseys, because <laughs> people are always like, your cow's starving to death. She's not, um, she's, she's healthy. It's normal for them to look this kind of hollowed out on the sides, but even for, she'll, she'll level out, but like here. Fern here is a really good picture of a very healthy jersey, and you can still like see her ribs and her hip bones. This is really good jersey confirmation here. And Helen looks a little hollow, but she just gave birth today. That's real normal. All right, we're gonna put her on the stanchion and actually uh, milk off a little bit of this colostrum. We're not trying to milk her all the way out, but just alleviate some of the swelling. And also just get some fly spray on her because they're, they're bothering her. We're gonna come down here and peek at this little baby. Today's my cousin Amy's birthday, so I think that he may be called Amos because that's her nickname, is Famous Amos. Hey, little cutie. Hey, you're a handsome man. You are so handsome. He looks a whole lot like the other babies that have been born. But hey, it's okay. Hey, you little handsome dude. So cows have this, calves have this reflex when they're born when you touch them to like press down into the ground because it's kind of their only um, defense mechanism when they're this little is to hide. It's okay. He's a pretty solid little calf. He's, he's, um, he's definitely bigger than a full jersey. Not, he's probably not as tall as like Fraulein and Hallie were when they were born, but he's thicker. Uh, the reason we chose the Devons uh, was because one, we had access to good stock that was 100% grass fed. But we also knew that they would cross well with jerseys without causing any sort of like birthing issues because our friends Justin and Rebecca Rhodes, they have a Devon bull and that's what they use to breed their jerseys. So when we met a guy down in Florida that was looking to sell part of his herd, we knew that that would work well. Here's Delmer, he's gotten big. Um, there's our, well, here comes Hope. There's Bo, the proud papa. Stand, there he is. They're all just hanging out. She eats faster than she used to. So there are different ways that you can do it whenever your cow gives birth for the first time. I say it's debated. I mean, people just, people just have different ways of doing things. This is ours. Because jerseys are such high producers, they can be more prone to milk fever or ketosis. And the way we do this, because this is how I was taught by the person who mentored me in having cows, was to not milk them all the way out, like the first handful of days after they give birth. Some people immediately put the cow in the stanchion and milk out everything that they can get out. But for such a high producer, I don't want to communicate to their body that kind of demand, um, indicating that they need to produce that kind of supply because they really don't. I, don't. I just don't want to throw their body into any sort of imbalance. What we do is the first few days, we literally are just milking out. What happened with her tail? Oh, it just got caught. So what we do the first few days, really probably the first four or five days, is we just milk off to alleviate the pressure. So I'm gonna milk off some of the colostrum now where she's real swollen. Um, and then over the course of the next handful of days, we'll increase that. We will not pull the calf at night till he's t at least two weeks old. Um, and at that point, we put the calf up starting much later at night. So they're separate for the hours of nighttime. We milk in the morning, reunite them for the day. And then as the calf gets older and is more effectively draining her out in the evenings, we'll move that time of separation up higher. And I mean, I say that, but it's like 5.30 right now. And Fraulein's still out here and she's like, what, three months old? So she's getting sprayed down with some fly spray. Helen's getting a little grain snack. And I am going to just wash her off and milk off some of this colostrum. So when, girl, when a cow first, um, so when a cow has a baby, thank you. <laughs> she just whacked me in the face. When cows do that to you, by the way, it's not, they're not being, it's not accidental. They know what they're doing. They have pretty good aim with that, uh, with their tails. <laughs> 
Uh, so when a cow has a baby, a lot of times they'll have like edema, which is just swelling. So you'll sometimes when you start milking them, you'll think, man, there's nothing else coming out. And it might not be filled with milk. It might just be swelling. They also sometimes won't let their milk down. So it can be good to handle them from an early point after calving. But the main thing we're looking for here is to make sure that she doesn't have any sort of infection that we are giving a little bit of pressure because this hurts to be really swollen. Wow. Maya. What? So last year, whenever Helen calved for the first time, it was crazy how hard she was to hand milk. This is not hard. We noticed that as she was preparing to give birth that her teats look a lot larger this calving than last time. And she's a lot easier to handle. So it feels like the calf has actually eaten quite a bit off the front one, so I'm not even gonna take much out of those, but the, top, the back are pretty tight, so I wanna alleviate this a little bit. Take off about a half gallon. In some cultures, cow colostrum is a great delicacy. Um, we're just going to put that in the freezer uh, just because it's really good to have on hand in case you do end up having specifically, obviously, calf that is born and for some reason can't get colostrum from its mom because it's a pretty life or death situation for a calf to get colostrum within the first 24 hours of its life. Ideally, the first like 12 hours, the sooner the better. But it, we have used that before. I think we've given it to piglets before, like we've given it to other animals to boost them. And so what we will pull off of her over the next few days will go in the freezer to have on hand. So now she goes back in with her baby. Yeah, we'll keep a close eye on the tightness of her udder. We don't want to milk off too much. We just want to milk off just enough to keep her from getting infection. We'll keep her comfortable. Keep her comfortable. So we'll, like I said, we'll check it in the morning and then the age milking, we'll yeah. keep eyes on it. She's so mischievous. <laughs> no soup for you? Yeah. You cannot have uh, mugs or jars or anything along here, especially with these two. The, the Devon heifers leave it alone. These will knock it off. I call her Jenny. Her mom is the one I call Ginger. Yep. That I like so much. Yeah, I saw this post today on one of the Facebook groups for cows. I think it was keeping a family cow organically or something like that is what the group is called. And they were saying how amazing it is if you rub a cow down with coconut oil that it is helpful for keeping flies off. Now, we'll have to see how frequently and how thoroughly the application needs to be to be effective because if it were just like tearing through coconut oil I guess that could be um, okay, but you would have to buy some, you'd have to buy cheaper oil for that to be economical. Because, like, I'm going to grab some of the oil out of the pantry, but it's the stuff we eat, and so it's kind of higher quality, and I'm going to try it and see before I go buy a bunch of cheaper oil. But it's worth trying. Uh, we use that spray now from Synergy, and it's it's pretty good, but it has to be applied, like, every single milking and it, it's pretty expensive to do it that way so maybe this will save some money. My little chickies are so cute. They're fully feathered. Obviously they could be outside. They don't have a heat lamp in here but we just don't have a place to put them right now. We'll put them in with the bigger flock but they're fine in here right now. We'll get let them get a bit, little bit bigger before we introduce them to that flock. Hey Gabe, are you a hot dog too?
Hello. <laughs> so nice of you to drop in. <laughs> so the calf is not the only new animal on our farm this week. Also surprised Jessica with her own horse. This is Haley. <laughs> She's a beautiful girl. Hello. She's very, very sweet and very friendly. What do you think of that? Oh, do we need to check out the camera? Okay. Hmm. What do you think of that? So, a lot of smells on that mic, huh? This is her first time seeing my camera. You're sweaty, girl. You need a good brush out. Pretty. She, is she does look a lot like Lady. She's just smaller. She looks identical to the horse that I grew up riding. Her name was Summer. She had the longest black tail. Yeah, she's got solid black socks. So that's how you can tell them apart too. Oh, thanks Paisley. Thanks, Paisley. <laughs> so Maya is constantly, oh, this is Amy calling me back. Hey, happy birthday. <laughs> I was gonna call you back because I'm shooting a video. So now I've just put you on speakerphone. <laughs> <laughs> this is a weird arrangement because right now there are thousands of people that are going to watch this and normally I would tell them to tell you happy birthday but it does no good on the speakerphone wait, in this current wait. So you're recording your video? Yeah. They'll they'll tell you happy birthday in the comment section. <laughs> Y'all tell Amy happy uh, birthday. I wanted to tell you that we had a calf born this morning, and so we're going to call him Amos. Oh, I love that. <laughs> In honor That's of your favorite kid. <laughs> oh, thank right. you so much. <laughs> okay, Sorry. friends, I'll be back oh, in a minute. No. So Maya, um, he's always kind of watching the pages where horses are sold, but obviously we weren't like really actively seeking out a horse. Now he did know that the horse that I grew up riding looked like this. He knew that I always have had a penchant for bay horses with black socks. But he saw, I guess, the post about her and reached out. She was actually left at a boarding place. Like two years ago. Uh, like two years ago. And they have worked with her this whole time and they, they were looking for a home for her and it really, it worked out well. So she's, she's a really solid horse. She's really sweet. Her name is Haley. Um, she had that name and I decided to keep it because I like the name Haley. But she's very, very sweet. It was very sweet of him um, to get her. Of course, we have Lady and Bosco and then Paisley is Wes's horse. But uh, Jeremiah has been getting the stuff in to start putting in the rotational grazing pastures through the pasture next door at Papa T's and we're going to be moving the beef over there and moving them around and he and Wes have really wanted from the beginning to do a lot of like the cattle work on horseback and uh, that's just something that has been in their hearts to do and so they were just going to ride Lady and Bosco that's what we had planned on when we got them was for Wes and Maya to ride and then he he brought Haley home this week and he said because he wanted me to ride with them so that was very sweet. Super sweet. <laughs> Super <The> sweetest. <laughs> sweet. If I was any sweeter, it'd be sugar with maple syrup. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, I'm looking forward to riding horses with you. Well, the the sun is going down. Maya's sun gonna. Is going down. Also, I probably should address this bandage on my hand because you're gonna get a ton of questions about it. Oh yeah. That's just a little cut, right here. It's not that big a deal. Just but the location makes it difficult to heal because every time it's more than just a tiny it's not like a tiny cut it's a substantial okay. cut but it's not like it didn't need stitches to me it's not that big a deal yes right but because of its location doing milking and having to do stuff it would get hit and then break open so i've kept it bandaged to keep it moist and let it heal and it's been doing a lot better so i should have it on for another day it's not that big a deal. it looks way worse than it actually. <laughs> I knew that I'd be getting a bunch of cuts. Yeah. What's wrong with nice hand? Yeah, no, it's just a cut that needed to be covered. I for still it. got one good arm to hold you. <laughs> That's from Tombstone. <laughs> no. Okay. Thank you guys for hanging out with us today. Exciting day. Of animals. Animals. <laughs> and I'm glad to be home. I'm ready to be in my pajamas, so we'll be back in the saddle tomorrow. Back. Maybe literally. <laughs> Thank you guys for hanging out with us. We bless you. Until next time.